Happy 4th of July. I hope everybody is having a good one. My name is Chef Sebastian Carosi. I'm better known as the Short Order Cannabis Revolutionary. And uh, I want to bring you this awesome salad and little cooking with cannabis segment brought to you by Kush.com and all the great folks at Kush. Um, today, I'm going to be making the freshest mess of greens with summer berries and some wild huckleberry vinaigrette made with some uh, awesome honey vinegar, some uh, different wild greens. Some I'm also going to be using some cannabis and hemp greens and uh, sunflower seeds, goat cheese, crumbled dry goat cheese if you'd like. You can also use blue cheese if you'd like and make it a true red, white, and blue salad for 4th of July. Um, magical butter is going to be the one, and the magical butter machine is going to be the one that we'll be using to not only decarboxylate our cannabis, but to infuse our oil. Uh, we did use some uh, infused cannabis infused oil uh, is our intoxicating part. Remember, without decarboxylation, there is no intoxication. And not only do we like intoxication, but we also like the effects of the CBD, CBG, CBN, and all the whole alphabet when it's decarb so that our bodies can, and our endocannabinoid system can actually absorb it in its best, its best sense. So the salad is really simple. I'll get into that in a second. I'm gonna get into the fact that this Magical Butter Machine countertop botanical extractor is going to allow us to decarboxylate or make active, better known, the, uh, the, uh, the cannabinoids that are gonna be readily available. The cannabis that we're gonna use is Sour Tsunami today. And uh, we put it right in our, uh, basically what we do is, is that we're gonna get the decarb box that Magical Butter provides. The decarb box is uh, oven proof and oven ready. And I do 56 grams of cannabis, which is two ounces. Um, nice buds, I don't like to break it up from this point on, I put them right in there. Put this in the oven and for me, Decarboxylation is about 250 degrees, and that's for 45 minutes, 50 minutes or so. Um, and that, that, that decarb, when I say 45 minutes, I mean that the product on the inside of that box is at 250 degrees for 45 minutes. That will give you a proper decarboxylation for the THC and CBD that I'm looking for. Longer cart decarboxylation times and different temperatures will lead to decarboxylation of the other multitude of components and compounds that are found in, in the cannabis plant. Um, and don't forget, if you're doing this for health, and remember, we all legalized and recreationalized cannabis under the auspice of medicine. So we want to know that our cannabis is clean. We want to know that our, that our cannabis has clean room grown CBD. We want to know that they are tested for heavy metals, pesticides, mold, mycotoxins and residual solvents. We want all that stuff out of there. So for me, it's really easy. I'm using flour that I know where it was grown and who grew it. I'm also using the raw leaves where it was grown from somebody I know that grew it. And uh, so after that comes out of the oven, it's really simple. All you got to do is add your oil. I do three cups of oil to the 56 grams of decarboxylated cannabis. Uh, to the magical butter machine. The magical butter machine goes on. It's got a button. It's got two buttons actually. Oil setting and one hour. Put it in there. And the biggest, the easiest thing is, is that you strain it through this really fine micron strainer. I think this one is uh, 190 microns and they got them finer. And uh, strain your oil. And then bam, you've got some really nice cannabis or hemp high CBD or high THC, two to one or one to two, whichever you'd like uh, oil to use in your cooking process. Uh, in anything, actually, just try not to heat it after that because you know, the, the cannabis has already been activated, the product's already been decarboxylated, but heating that is just gonna destroy what you've done good for it, which is add the cannabinoids into it. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna make the vinaigrette. And uh, the, the, like I said, this is the freshest mess of greens and summer berries. And uh, these berries right here, there's a multitude of cool berries in here. There's hood strawberries. There's blueberries that are high bush blueberries, as you can tell by the size. Those little red berries are huckleberries. Those are a true Northwest treasure 
only native to here in the Pacific Northwest. I do think they have them a couple other places in the world, but I think it's far away from here. And then the last berry is a salmon berry. If you don't know about that one, whoo wee, that's in for you're in for a treat. I have some wild pea flowers, some borage flowers, the hemp leaves, some pea vines that I grew, some lettuces that I grew, and some dried elderberries, red and purple and i know folks you might say that the red ones may be poisonous but the berries themselves are not poisonous it's the stems i also have some bee pollen and this bee pollen is the most perfect food on the planet with this man can survive on bee pollen and water alone i think there's oh a multitude of branch chain amino acids that are in this and you can really tell by the color this was the this is the bee's knees ha 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 bee pollen um, I do uh, have some beta carophylline or beta C, a terpene that is, uh, you may want to add it if you want. It's totally up to you. I have some um, regular rice wine vinegar. And uh, let's get started on the dressing. And I'll go through the uh, ingredients and the amount of ingredients now that we've talked about some of the, uh, the uh, ingredients themselves and we've shown them off. Let's get to going with this dressing. The dressing is really simple, this vinaigrette. And the vinaigrette it's a it's a wild red huckleberry vinaigrette and uh let's get started i'm gonna put these huckleberries in this bowl and i'm gonna crush them with a fork i got the big fork out and i just want to crush them to expel some of the uh some of the juice from them so that they can help the vinaigrette along the vinaigrette the ingredients for the vinaigrette are as followed it's a quarter cup of wild huckleberries Two tablespoons of lemon juice. I'm going to fresh squeeze that. Two to three tablespoons of honey vinegar, that homemade honey vinegar. It's hard to ferment honey vinegar. Trust me. And uh, one teaspoon of rice wine vinegar uh, and a quarter cup of cannabis oil, that cannabis olive oil that we have over there. Some salt and pepper. My preferred salt is actually Jacobson sea salt from the Neatards Bay area of Oregon coast. I know where the water comes from. I know it's clean. Uh, I know the salt's clean. And uh, one tablespoon of sugar or honey. I recommend honey. I'm using the Cannabis uh, Rescue Honey. And for me, this is huge because, because it's, uh, they're using rescued bees and with the honey. So uh, I'm going to mash these up. I'm going to cut this lemon in half. I got a strainer and a fork because uh, I don't want to get any seeds into this vinaigrette. Uh, although it is pulpy with the, uh, with the crushed huckleberries. Um, so the vinaigrette called for one tablespoon of honey or sugar. I'm actually going to add that now. And like I said, that's one tablespoon of honey or sugar. You can add more if you want. I do not recommend. Can cannabis was recreationalized and legalized under the auspice of medicine and yet when we go into all these cannabis pot shops and dispensaries so on and so forth all we're seeing is gummies on the shelf gummies gummies this gummies that sugar-based products all over the place that's all we see I thought and for what I've been seeing in the food world that sugar is definitely causing a lot of different cancers in our bodies uh, and diabetes type 2 type 1 so on and so forth so cannabis is a cancer combatant I thought so when I go into all these stores, it's really oxymoronical for me to sit there and see all these sugar-based products infused with cannabis to help cure us from our ailments. So I use the honey. It's rescue honey. I'm going to add some of the lemonade. The, 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 the name of the dressing is, is uh, Wild Huckleberry Lemonade Vinaigrette. So we want to kind of stick to that theme. So lemonade's definitely always sweet. I got this strainer, I got the fork, I'm going to add the strainer to the bowl, I'm going to juice this lemon right over it, catching all the seeds, we don't want any seeds to go in there. And uh, I believe the recipe says two tablespoons of lemon juice, um, kush.com is probably kind enough to have the recipe up online for you, uh, and you can go to kush.com to get the recipe at any time. Um, so it's about two tablespoons of Lemon juice. I'm going to dissolve that honey in there. Smash up the huckleberries a little bit more. Sorry about all that loud banging. Get my hands a good wipe. It's COVID-19, folks, on July 4th of 2020. So um, I've washed my hands and we're still in semi-quarantine. 
Uh, I've washed my hands a multitude of times, actually. So uh, we're going to do some pepper, a few grinds of pepper, fresh pepper, always the best. A little bit of Jacobson sea salt. This is flake salt, so it's almost a finishing salt, so you want to break it up in your fingertips in order for it to disperse. But this on salad grains, especially bitter grains, is far better than any other salt you're going to get. Um, and then we've got that honey vinegar. And this is, uh, this is made from fermenting honey, of course, turning honey into vinegar. Honey is not an easy ferment. Uh, this is quite special. This is almost as special as the red huckleberries. That's why I chose it to marry with the red huckleberries. And uh, the, it's about two tablespoons of honey vinegar. A little bit of this goes a long way. We already added honey. And there's about one teaspoon of rice wine vinegar we want to add to that just to stretch the vinaigrette. That's just normal rice wine vinegar. This is a actually seasoned rice wine vinegar, which means it does have a little added sugar in there. We're going to mix this up and get this going. This vinaigrette's looking really nice. And this is a really loose vinaigrette. I'm going to add some of that oil and then if the camera wants to get a close-up of this inside of this bowl right now, by all means, come and check this vinaigrette out. Really simple, wild huckleberry lemonade vinaigrette. All right, so we've talked about decarboxylation. We've done the vinaigrette. Now I think it's time for us to get this salad going. And uh, for all of you guys that are watching on kush.com, jump onto Instagram and give not only kush.com and kush.com events and kush marketplace a follow, give chef Sebastian Carosi a follow. Just start typing in Sebastian and see, and it usually will pop right up after chef, just chef Sebastian Carosi. I'm not gonna spell anything because it's way too difficult. You gotta bitch my parents for that. Oh, sorry about that. I'm trying to keep the cussing to a minimum. All right, so we have the vinaigrette going and we, uh, we're we gonna need to get these lettuces out and get these lettuces, these hemp greens, pea vines. We're gonna need to get those ready and get this salad cracking. Okay, so I've got everything I need. Uh, berries are there, flowers are there, salt and peppers there. We're gonna, these are the pea vines, and pea vines, you'll find, you should find these anytime around the, this time of year that you're getting the uh, peas popping up in, them, in the garden. This is some parsley, just regular curly leaf parsley from the garden, more pea vines, some carrot tops, carrot tops in there as well. And this has got like baby shard, red leaf, baby spinach, mizuna, uh, more baby shard, maybe mizuna. I really like that mizuna. The mizuna is a <clears throat> nice bitter green. And this salad is, uh, it's called a salad. It's called the freshest mess of greens and berries, but it's more of a berry salad. It's more of one of those salads that's like berries and goods versus greens and a lot of lettuce. And then of course we got these uh, these awesome these uh, these leaves uh, some of these leaves are from Just Farms which is down the road in Ridgefield it's a certified organic uh, I believe he's a low till uh, hemp farm Washington State licensed hemp farm and uh, some other of these are backyard Gorilla Glue number four and U Dove. For those of you that have lived in the Pacific Northwest, you're really familiar with that U-Dub. So, uh, yeah, so I got a bunch of the U-Dub and a bunch of the Gorilla Glue number four uh, leaves to put in this salad right now because we want to eat our greens, too. We don't want to just smoke all of our greens, uh, although the effects are phenomenal. Uh, so we got the salad. We got the greens down there. We got some, uh, some tongs to toss this. And we're just going to get these, we're going to get these wet. Remember, the oil is already in there. The vinegar's already in there. Everything's already in there. So we're just going to coat these, uh, we're going to coat these lettuces with the dressing. 
nicely. Uh, remember, the proportion of berries to greens is there's a lot more berries in the salad than there is greens. All right? Once you see everything's coated, a lot of chefs like to use their hands. A lot of chefs will use tongs. I'm using tongs be because we're on TV. And if I get my hands sticky, it's going to be a hell of a mess. And nobody from Kush is here to help me clean it up. You know what I'm saying? It's me and Carla. That's it. All right. So I'm going to get these on this plate. And I'm going to use a spoon to drizzle some schnizzle. Some more of these huckleberries because I want these huckleberries to fall on there too. And we got the berries. We got all sorts of accoutrement to put on this. I'm going to set this to the side. Get my towel. Let me get my tweezers ready for all you tweezer chefs. The flowers and tweezers, you know. All right. So I think I'm going to half the strawberries because they're a little, uh, they're a little big. I'm not worried about taking the tops off, but I'm going to put these berries in here to give them a mix. I'm going to half the strawberries. If your strawberries are big, you can cut them any way you want. You can cut them this way and give yourself rounds if you want. It's really what, what, whatever you want. Uh, since this is a made for TV, uh, salad, we're going to go with the nice small ones cut like that. And these are actually really ripe, you guys. These are, uh, Carla and I picked these on Savi Island. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Savi Island, but these are Mount Hoods uh, that we picked on Savi Island, which is uh, just a few miles away in uh, Portland, Oregon, because we're in the upper left. Mm. Blueberries, huckleberries, salmon berries. Oh, salmon berries. They're a treat. I'm going to be really careful with those salmon berries. I think I might put those on. I'm going to put a, a tiny bit of a splash of that vinaigrette on the berries. Because huckleberries, huckleberries and lemonade, you know. Gives those berries a nice little sheen and gloss. that I washed my hands probably 60 times already so you can't bitch at me about my hands not being washed we're covid it up down here oh this is looking wicked good Putting some of these salmon berries on there. Oh, yeah. Them big bad boy salmon berries. Those were picked on uh, the Oregon coast, Mount Hebo, about three, four days ago. Uh, they're unbelievably good and unbelievably ripe, unbelievably delicate, too. Oh, this salad's shaping up nice, nice. Uh, a little bit of bee pollen, like I said, America's perfect food. A few sunflower seeds, just a few. A little crunch aspect. For other crunch, we added those dry. Elderberries, Sambuca in several countries. Get all these strawberries on here. It's well deserved of the strawberries this time of year. Actually, all the berries. Everybody gets a shout out this time of year because of, uh, well, it's berry season in the Pacific Northwest. And I'm going to give a few clumps of some 
dry sheep's milk cheese. It's totally up to you. You can use goat's milk. You can use sheep's milk. You can use cow's milk. You can use cheese curds. You can use really whatever you like. Uh, we're goat cheese. We're cheese curds. We're cheddar. We're, we're any kind of cheese uh, in this house. I guess that's probably enough tweezer work with the cheese. I guess I got to tweezer work some flowers now. And uh, <clears throat> we have borage from the garden. We've got some wild pea flowers. Those wild pea flowers are really nice. They're like miniature orchids. And we have some cilantro flowers. The lemon, lime, the cilantro flowers go really well with that. You don't see me with tweezers very much. I just want you all to know that. Uh, so I hope you guys are enjoying this. And we'll do one more pea flower. And some borage flowers. You got a little, these borage flowers are... Uh, one of those really old medicinal style uh, flowers that, uh, well, even the shakers grew way back in the day. Um, and they're just cool looking. Three, four, one, two, three, four. We got to be odd numbered or the feng shui will not be happening. And I think with that said, we might have this, uh, we might have this uh, salad here done. This freshest mess of greens and summer berries with a wild huckleberry vinaigrette, bee pollen, sunflower seeds, dry sheep's milk cheese, Greens from the garden, pea vines from the garden, berries from the wild, berries from the farm, hemp from a certified organic hemp farm, honey from rescue bees. Thanks a lot for joining us. Remember, follow on Instagram, Chef Sebastian Carosi, also kush.com. And uh, thanks for joining us. We're going to be doing this several more times. So take some time. Jump over to kush.com. Find out when we'll be on, what the next things are we'll be making. Um, eating the devil's lettuce and cooking with cannabis has been a passion of mine. I've been cooking with cannabis since the early 90s. Um, I'm not one that just throws a leaf on it and, uh, and calls it good. Um, we've had cannabis now. We have cannabinoids going into our bodies in two or three different ways here. We have raw and we have the oil um, and we have the uh, CBD infused honey. Uh, so those things in itself, I hope you enjoy the freshest mess of greens and summer berries with a wild huckleberry vinaigrette. Thanks for joining me, Chef Sebastian Carosi, better known as the short order cannabis revolutionary. Have a wonderful 4th of July. Stay safe, stay sane, and stay lifted.